are th or four different things. There's, they usually say just three different things, but I like to say four different things because there's one thing that I want to remember as being a little bit separate than the other things. We talk about nouns being a person. We talk about nouns being a place. And we talk about nouns being a thing. And we talk about nouns also being an animal, especially in our diary of a spider story. We can remember animals as being something totally separate. Hey, you're not to turn your screen back on, hon. So let's see if we can come up with some nouns that name a person, a place, a thing, or an animal. So I'm going to call on every single person. You don't have to worry about putting your hands up. I'm going to pull some sticks. I'm also going to call on some friends at home. I'm going to call on every person to see if they can tell me a person, a place, a thing, or an animal. I'll start with a person. Um... Valerie, can you give me a, an example of a person? Um, you are a what? Girl. girl. A girl is a noun that names a person. All right, what about a place? Um, Angelina, can you tell me an example of a place? I'm going to a store. A store. A store is a place. What about a thing? Tim? Okay, what would be a thing that you like to play with? A toy. A toy is a thing. What about an animal? Lottie? A monkey. A monkey. Ah, I don't like monkeys, but that's okay. I'll still write it down. Monkey. What about another kind of person that could be a noun. Jake, give me an example of another person that's a noun. A boy. What about another kind of place? Let's see if Kaden can give me another example of a place. We have a store. What else could be an example of a place? A restaurant. A restaurant. What about another kind of thing? Yanessa, can you give me an example of a thing? What are you sitting on? A chair. A chair is a thing. What about another kind of animal? What's another example of an animal? Kinsey, can you give me an example of an animal? You probably have one of these as a pet. It barks. A dog. A dog is an example of an animal. What about another example of a person? I can't read this name because I'm covering it up. Alina. Um, we have girl. We have boy. A mom. A mom. What about another example of a place? Zayden. A school. A school. Good. I was hoping somebody would say that one because that's where we are right now. What about another example of a thing? Mackenzie, can you give me another example of a thing? Um, we have a toy. We have a chair. What do you have in front of you? An iPad. An iPad is a thing. Actually, you know what? I'm going to say... I'm going to get rid of that because that's the name of that thing. So I can't really use that just yet. It is a thing, but that is the name of that thing. Uh, Mackenzie, what were you writing with a second ago? A pencil. Let's go with that one because that's just a common noun. It's not the name of that thing. Okay. And another animal, Logan. Um, how about um, a gorilla? A gorilla. And let's say, Jamie, can you come up with another example of a person? A dad. A dad. Ooh, I don't know what happened to my pen there. That was a weird big line. A dad. What about another example of a place, Levi? We have store, restaurant, school. What's another example of a place? Um, a supermarket. Okay, a supermarket is a type of store. So I don't want to put another store up there. A store, well, restaurant, school, where else could you go? That's a place. Um, 
Stay on that voting thing. Where could you go if you wanted to go outside? Tell me a place that you could go to outside. Oh, a baseball field. A baseball field. Okay. Oh. Here we go. I could say my book is a thing. I could say a cat is an animal. So there's lots of people, places, things, and animals. These are just any people, places, things, and animals. They are not names of people, places, and things, or animals. So we call them common nouns, just your everyday people, places, and things. Okay? So now we're going to talk about some nouns in our reader's notebook. I'm going to close this out real fast. I want you to go back into your reader's notebook. That's your soft reading book. should still be in front of you. And you want to turn to page 56, I think. It's hard for me to tell with the little letters there. Let me make this a little bit bigger. Yep, 56. 56. It should be almost right where you just were in your reader's notebook because we were just working on page 53. So you should pretty much be almost right there. Now, on page 56, what I would like us to do is we want to just write the noun that names the person, place, or animal in each sentence for numbers 1, 2, 3, and 4. Then it's going to have us switch gears and write the noun that names a place or a thing for 5, 6, 7, and 8. So we'll start with the person and animal part first, and then we'll switch gears and do the place or thing. So number one, the sentence says the girl sees a web. Which word in that sentence names the noun that is a person or an animal? Tiff? That is an insect, but I mean, not an insect. That is... Tim, listen to my directions and listen to my sentence. What? The sentence says the girl sees a web. What word in that sentence is the noun that names a person or an animal? What word in that sentence names the person or the animal? The sentence says, the girl sees a web. What word names the person or the animal? The web. The web is not a person or an animal. What other noun in that sentence could name a person or an animal? Spider. Spider's not in our sentence. The sentence says, the girl sees a web. What's the other noun in that sentence that could name a person or an animal? Who are we talking about in that sentence? Girl. So for number one, you want to write the word girl. Right there in your sentence, write the word girl for number one. It's right there in your sentence. Thanks, Mackenzie. Thanks, Jake. Thanks, Kinsley. Thanks, Inessa. Okay, number two. The boy screams. What word in that sentence names the, the noun that is a person or an animal? Jamie. Boy. Boy. Very good. So on the word, line for number two, write the word boy. Boy names the person or the animal in the boy screams. Did you write boy down, Kaden? Okay, fantastic. Then you can put your pencil in your book, close your book, so I know you finished that one. That's the best way to tell me. Hey, where's your regular pencils? We're not going to use the color pencils, right? You have regular pencils. Get one out real quick while you have a chance. Leave that book open. You're going to need it. 56 there. Thanks, Mackenzie. Thanks, Kimberly. Thanks, Jake. 56. Grab a regular pencil while you have a second or two. Work a lot better because that way you have an eraser. Ines, did you have the word boy written down, please? Thanks, Ines. Okay, number three, the spider scurries away. What word in that sentence names the noun that is a person? Or an animal. What word in that sentence is the person or the animal, Logan? Um, spider. Spider. Very good. So for number three, write the word spider. 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 Sp
spider. The spider scurries away. Spider is the noun that names the person or the animal. Thanks, Mackenzie. Thanks, Kinsley. Uh, thanks, Kate. Thanks, Janessa. All right, and number four is a little tricky. The grass tickled the dog. What noun in that sentence names the person or the animal? Levi. D-O-G. Which no. is dog. Very good. D-O-G, which is dog. The dog is the person or the animal in number four. So make sure you put dog down for number four. Thanks, Mackenzie. You're on the ball today, Mackenzie. Fantastic. Make sure you're going to get an extra JoJo point for that. You are really on the ball today, my dear. Thanks, Kinsley. Great, Jake. Thanks, Kinesa. Okay. Now, for the next half of this page, it wants us to name the noun that's talking about a place or a thing. Okay, so now we're thinking of the place or the thing in the sentence. Number five says, spider carries a suitcase. Which word in that sentence is a noun that names a place or a thing? Spider carries the suitcase. What do you think, Alina? Suitcase. Suitcase, very good. So for number five, you want to write the word suitcase. The suitcase is the thing. Spider is also a noun in that sentence, but it's not the noun we're looking for. We're looking for the noun that names the place or the thing. Great job, Mackenzie. Great job, Vanessa. Thank you, Kinsley. Thanks, Jake. Thanks, Janessa. Okay, number six, Beetle puts on his hat. What is the noun that names the place or the thing for number six? Beetle puts on his hat. What's the noun, Angelina? Hat. Hat, very good. Hat is the thing for number six. Beetle is also a noun, but we're looking for the thing, hat. Thank you, Mackenzie. Thank you, Kinsley. Thanks, Jake. Ooh, now all my friends are really on the ball this morning. They're really moving along. Good job. Thank you, Yanessa. All right, number seven says the snow fell on the bugs. We are looking for the noun that names the place or the thing. Yanessa, do you have your hand raised? What do you think is the place or the thing? Snow. Yes, fantastic. Snow. Snow in this case names the thing that is falling on the bugs. So we want to make sure we put the word snow. Great, Jake. Great, Mackenzie. Great, Kinsley. Thank you, Yanessa. Good job. And last but not least, the bugs move inside the garage. What noun names the place or the thing in that sentence? What do you think, Tim? The garage. The garage. Very good. Yep, the garage is the place in that sentence. Garage. Or on the show that I watch, I watch this one show, she says a garage. Yeah. A garage. It sounds so fancy. Thank you, Jake. Thank you, Kinsley. I'm going to put the car in the garage. Yeah. The yeah. garage. She yeah. sounds so fancy. Yeah. Thank you, Mackenzie. Yeah. Fantastic, Vanessa. Thank you. Okay, now, this is the last. We're not going to do. Wait a minute. Let me just. Nope. 
We are done with our reader's notebook, so we can put that away for now. And the next couple things we're going to do, we're going to review them real quick, and then there are going to be some activities that we're going to work on in Seesaw that go along with them, okay? Because there's some more skills that go along with our story. There's starting a reader's notebook page that go with it. So we're going to talk some more about hard and soft G. We're going to talk a little bit about cause and effect. We have two activities to practice in Seesaw for that. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about context clues, too, because context clues is important. Context clues helps us understand what words mean in the story when the author doesn't just tell us what it means. Yes, Jamie? Oh, okay, I'll help you unhook it in just a second. It'll be okay where it is for right now. I'll help you unhook it in just a second. Let me start with context clues first, okay? Let me find my little video here. Okay, so context clues. Sometimes we're reading a story and we come across a word that we might not understand. It's a big word. Maybe it's a word that we're just not sure of what it means. We can use those clues in our story, also clues in the pictures, to help us understand what it means. So this video is a little song that we're going to practice with it. Let me go through the commercial real quick, because of course there's a commercial. Grammarly can help. This sentence is quickly correct, but it's wordy and hard to... There we go. Now I can skip it. Okay. Use the context. It's not so rough. Use your oh, it started without me. Let me back up a little bit here. Here we go. There we go. frightened. So what kind of clues could give us the idea that the boy was frightened? How can we use the rest of the words in that sentence to help us understand that maybe repulsed means frightened? Jaden, what do you think? The spider crawling up his arm. Yeah, there's a spider crawling up his arm. Have you ever had that experience with a spider crawling on you anywhere? Yes. 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 And if you've not, that's okay, but have you ever had the experience where maybe there's a spider crawling near you? Yes. And maybe you're a friend that does not like spiders. I am a person that does not Jesus, like spiders. Like if you ever want to see Mrs. Tucker seriously fly and not touch the ground, put a spider near me. Like, literally, I get, like, these super magic powers, and I can fly anywhere without touching the ground. I swear I can. Because I will try to get away from that spider so fast. I am repulsed by spiders. So, I'm thinking, like Angelina was saying... Repulse probably means frightened just by these clues. The spider was crawling up the boy's arm. So let's see what happens. Use your clues. It's not so tough. Use the context. It's not so rough. Now this says disgusted, and I'm okay with disgusted. Repulse must mean disgusted because I would be disgusted if a spider crawled up my arm. Disgusted is another big fancy word. Disgusted kind of means you just don't like it. You, you're kind of grossed out by it, okay? Sometimes the clues come as examples. Sometimes they come as synonyms. Sometimes the clues tell just the opposite. Sometimes they're even definitions. It's not so tough. Use the context. It's not so rough. Use your clues. 
All right, here we go. The next sentence says, put your hand down and just listen, please. The turtle lumbered or walked slowly toward the water. Sometimes the words actually give us the definition of what that fancy word might mean. So they circled the word lumbered. The turtle lumbered or walked slowly toward the water. What do you think lumbered means? Anybody want to make a guess? Angelina. Yeah. How'd you know that, Angelina? Uh, because it says the turtle walked lumbered and... It says walked slowly right there, didn't it? Well, yeah. So this sentence actually told us what the word meant because it said the turtle lumbered or walked slowly toward the water. So right away we could use those context clues to help us understand what lumbered means. It's not so tough. Use that context. It's not so rough. Lumbered means walk slowly. It's a context clue. And a word in a sentence simply leaves you hanging in your knowledge base just isn't enough. Use that context clue. those words that we don't understand are. Okay, now, another thing I want to review today, let me make this one smaller, I'll close this one out. Maybe, maybe not, there we go. Okay, we close this one out. I would like to review cause and effect. Now, we didn't go over this yesterday. We did, we had a little bit of it on our morning work, but we didn't actually do it in class. Cause and effect, something happens, first. And then because that thing happens, something else because happens because of it. So we, I've always liked to use the example, it's raining outside. It's raining outside is the cause. So when I go outside, I'm going to get wet. I got wet because it was raining outside. So the raining outside part had to happen first for me to get wet, right? Otherwise, I would have stayed perfectly dry. Or yesterday, like I said, it was really hot and sunny outside. I just bought an ice cream cone, had my ice cream cone in my hand, but I was too busy talking. Shocker, Mrs. Tucker talks. Shocker. And all that ice cream melted all over my hand. That was my effect. The cause, what happened first was really hot outside and I was talking too much. The effect was I got sticky hands because I didn't eat my ice cream fast enough and it melted. I was really disappointed. It was mint chocolate chip. It was my very favorite. This is a little movie called The Birds. There are no words to this movie, but we're going to talk about cause and effect with this movie because I think this is a really good example of cause and effect. Plus, it's really super funny. So, you may have seen it before if you have. Fantastic. It's a short movie. It's a little Pixar movie. Let's watch what happens. Each other, they kind of bump each other and not being very careful as they land. So, 
the cause is the birds are bumping each other when they land on the wire. The effect is now the birds are fighting a little bit. All right, what happened? What happened, Jose? They stopped fighting. They stopped fighting. There's our effect. Why did that happen? What caused that to happen? Angelina. Because there was a big bird coming. Yeah, there's a big bird on the end of the line. He went, hey. So the cause was the big bird came and said, hey. The effect is all the little birds stopped fighting. Now they're kind of just staring at him like, huh? <laughs> Let's see what happens. Wow. All right, so what's going on here? What's going on now, Zayden? Now they're now all of them are fighting. Yeah, they're angry again. Why are they angry again, Kaden? Because they're all squished together. Because they're all squished together. So the cause, the birds got all squished together. The effect is now they're fighting again. Except for big bird. <laughs> All right, what happened? What happened to Big Bird, Jose? He fell down. He fell down. Why did he fall down? What caused that to happen? What was the cause, Angelina? Derek, put down eyes up. Because it was too heavy. No, did you catch what they did to poor Big Bird? Did anybody catch what they did to poor Big Bird? Oh. They did. What did they do? They hit him on the head. Yeah, they pecked his foot and he fell over. That wasn't very nice. So they pecked that big bird, made him fall a little bit. And so now the cause was they pecked at him and the effect was he actually fell off the wire. But he's holding on with his legs. This is the best part. This is the best part. Well, not this part, but right after this. This is kind of mean. All right, I'm going to pause it right there. What do you think is going to happen next? So here we have Big Bird almost all the way down to the ground. The wire is stretching all the way down, almost to the ground. So let's do a little inferencing. Let's do a little guessing what we think, a prediction. What do we think is going to happen next, Lonnie? What do you think? It's that though. If they fix the last time, the wire will like you think they're going to peck at his foot and one last toe is going to come off and then the wire is going to go flying? Yep. Yeah. All right. That's our prediction. Let's see what happens. He fell down. So why did Big Bird fall down? Jose says he fell down. Why did he fall down? The first of the birds went up and he was the one who was holding 
Why did he? Why did the rest of the birds go up and he went down? Because he was stupid to do that. He was to not like the other bird, big bird. Mmm, a little bit. That's why. Why else, Angelina? Mm, because the uh, little birds were all above the um, rope, and the big bird was on. But what was keeping the rope, the wire down to begin with? Jamie, what was keeping the wire down to begin with? Yeah, his one little talon, his one little toe, and he let go. Bink! So, he let go was the cause. Big Bird let go of his last toe. Bink! And what happened? What was the effect when Big Bird let go with his last toe, Levi? Um, all the um, little birds got sent one to the they flew up into the sky, right? Now watch what happens. This is funny. Look at all those feathers. Oh my God. He has no feathers. He lost his feathers. I like that movie, don't you? <laughs> All right. I think that's a good example of some cause and effect. All right, one more thing I want to go over. Okay, and one last thing that I want to go over before I show you what you're doing in Seesaw this morning. We're going to practice a little bit of hard and soft. Do you remember G can make two sounds? G can say g, 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 like G says, it's hard sound. Or it can say j, 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 like the letter J. What letters have to be right after G for it to make that j, j, j sound? What letters come right after it? Um, Valerie, can you give me one? All right, I'll come back to you. Think about it a little bit. Jamie, can you give me one letter? J. It does sound like a J, but what letter has to come right after G to make it make that J sound? What's one of those letters? I'll come back to you. Tim, what's one of those letters? G. Nope. What's one of the letters that has to come after the letter G, Kaden, to make it make its J sound? What's one of the letters, Lonnie, that has to come after G to make the, make the soft J sound? J -j -j. E, e. E is one. I is another. Y is a third. So when G is followed by E, I or Y, when it comes after, right after G, an E, an I, or a Y, then you have the soft j, 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 j sound, like a, like a letter J. All right, this is a real quick practice of this. Jingle spells. <laughs> Sounds of G, it does. G says G, but not before E, I, or Y. G says G, but not before E, I, or Y. G says G, but not before E, I, or Y. You know what I mean, like gallop or green, mostly G says G. Wait a minute, what about when G makes the J sound, like in the word gem? What do you mean? Well, let me explain it to you. G says J when it comes before E, I, or Y. G says J. When it comes before E, I, or Y. G says J. When it comes before E, I, or Y. That's what I meant, like gymnast or chant. Hey, 
sometimes G says G. Okay. All right, so G will make the G sound, but not before E, I, or Y. All right, let me show you real quick what you're going to be doing in Seesaw in just a little bit. Let me change my screens here. Let me close this out. Open up our Seesaw real fast. 